In 2020, in a remote part of Mozambique, across a piece of wild terrain, a feat that pushed the limits of engineering took place. Some thought the challenges were insurmountable, but mining company Kenmare Resources created a team that would make history. For the first time ever, mining equipment weighing more than 8,000 tons was moved intact across 23 kilometers of previously undeveloped land, with active mining operations being suspended for a mere two months. It all began in 1987, when an Irish mining company, Kenmare, explored the northern part of Mozambique in Southeast Africa for mining possibilities. 33 years and $1.4 billion of investment later, Kenmare had grown to producing 10% of Ilmenite world production. Kenmare Resources is an established mining company which operates the Moma Titanium Minerals Mine in Mozambique. The mine has been in production since 2007 and is a major supplier of Titanium Mineral Sands products. In 2019, Moma produced 1 million tons of Ilmenite, our main product, and subject to the completion of the move of wet concentrator plant B and a couple of other projects, we are on path to produce 1.2 million tonnes in 2021. As Kenmare grew, so did the district where the mine operates. Kenmare, together with the government of Mozambique, set out a plan to transform the area both economically with employment opportunities and skills transfer and also with social upliftment projects. Kenmare has worked hard to forge close relationships with the government of Mozambique and in turn with the host communities surrounding our project at Namalope. We've invested heavily to build a team with the necessary skills and experience. Before the development of the mine, Namalope was an extremely rural area with no easy access to water, power or health services. Kenmare realized their responsibility to help uplift the communities surrounding the MoMA mine. So, in 2004, before mining began, Kenmare created the Kenmare MoMA Development Association, KMAD. KMAD set out a series of social upliftment projects. Five villages serving over 24,000 people have been connected with clean water supply. A health center was constructed. 30 new classrooms were built and upgraded. Talking about KMAD is talking about something that is very dear to my heart because the Kenmare Moma Development Association is the association that Kenmare set up right at the beginning of this project, even before we started mining, to really show people we are here to give back to the community. Mining began in 2007 in a single pond. A second pond was added in 2013 and a third in 2020. The mine is bulk operation, moving up to 40 million tons of sand to produce more than 1 million tons of product. To date, the mine has produced over 12 million tons of final product, which is delivered by sea to customers around the world. In spite of such large mining outputs, Kenmare is proud of its small environmental footprint and it ensures that the land is left in a more fertile state after operations are completed. This helps local communities and farmers to farm the land more effectively. MoMA also uses renewable sources for its energy requirements, mainly from the Kahora Basa hydroelectric dam, and it uses no chemicals in its mining or processing operations. Always looking towards the future, in 2018, Kenmare laid out a series of growth projects to increase production of ilmenite to 1.2 million tons per annum. So, in 2020, the next and most challenging phase began. On the coast, 23 kilometers away from the existing Namalope mine, was the region of Pilivili. This together with the other mining ore zone, represents more than 6 billion tons of titanium ore, one of the world's largest deposits, enough to continue supplying for more than 100 years. However, 
To move the plant from Namalope to Pilivili would take time, and time is expensive. As soon as active mining stopped, so too would production, potentially losing millions of dollars a week. As soon as we stop mining, we're not producing HMC and we're not producing revenue. So to dismantle the plant, to move it and to reassemble would probably take the better part of a year. There was also risk in dismantling and reconstructing such a vast and complicated operational plant. It might never be the same. The risk of this and other cost implications were just too high. The plant would have to be moved in one piece. The main body of the plant weighs 7,000 tons, which is equivalent to 550 double-decker buses. Its height is the equivalent of a seven-story building. It is 80 meters long, wider than a football pitch. If the plan succeeded, it would save time and money and begin the journey of unlocking 100 years' worth of titanium. 18 months of meticulous planning took place. When there is so much at stake, nothing can be left to chance. One of the main options we looked at was to transport the dredge and the plant on SPMTs like this a short distance to the sea and drive them onto very large barges and then land them on the, on the beach. But we felt that that had a lot of risk attached to it, um, particularly around weather. We could have stood there for a month waiting for the right weather to do it, so we went for the road option. A road would have to be built to transport the plant between Namalope and Pilivili. A comprehensive technical study estimated the total cost of the move would be $106 million. The building of this road would account for a fifth of the budget. It had to be 23 kilometers long and 42 meters wide, about three times the size of a normal carriageway, with an overhang on either side of the plant, which meant that a total of 66 meters had to be cleared. If the plant tipped or sank into the road, half a billion dollars could be lost. Kenme appointed specialist contractors to assist with the move, led by engineering and project implementation company, Hatch. I've been involved in other projects and some larger ones in terms of value and complexity, but never on a project where we are moving the size of plant and dredge that we are on this project. And the, the type of construction from an earthworks and uh, building the road. On 19 September 2019, the road construction began and was scheduled to take nine months to complete. Mining at Namalupe was planned to stop in July 2020, in perfect time to begin the move. But no one could predict the wild card of the COVID-19 pandemic. The 1st of April of 2020, the Mozambican government declared a state of emergency because of the COVID pandemic. And one of the restrictions that were put in place is the issuing of visas was suspended and the borders were essentially closed to anything except for certain cargo transports. Um, you know, we weren't able to do the move if we weren't able to get skilled personnel in. So we um, went to the government and we explained the necessity that we had to get a certain number of skilled expatriates in. The move was now running behind schedule. With COVID-19, it had to be dynamic and change many of our plans to adapt to the situations that we found ourselves with not being able to bring people into Mozambique easily, with having to change locations of where our fabrication was taking place to other parts of the world because we couldn't get the work done in the, in the original uh, countries that we'd, we'd, we'd specified. The plant was planned to be out of operation for just 12 weeks before production was targeted to resume in mid-November. The pressure was now on. Once the logistics were in place and permits and social outreach achieved, the move could finally begin in mid-September 2020.
Again, Kenbe realized their social responsibility toward the new communities on the side of the road and in the new mining area of Pilivili. Kenme secured two new environmental and social permits. Currently in Namalobi, we have 10 villages that are in the surroundings of the mine. With the move to Pilivili, we will add uh, to our footprint another five direct communities, but you still have another four communities along this whole road. So all of them will now be part of the communities that Kenmer and Kemad will benefit and that we will help to develop. It's very poor communities. We don't have schools in most of them. There are no school infrastructures. So people, if they have to go and find the healthcare services, they need to travel about 75 kilometers up to Moma, or they will have to travel another 25 kilometers to Lardi. So we are actually at the process now to start building a health center for the communities in Pilivili. We have on the ground about five school blocks already being built. We have water boreholes that are being drilled. Kenme would construct an artificial pond, flood it, and mine the plant into the dock. So uh, once we finished mining, we moved the plant and the dredge into the relocation pond. We had concrete plinths to support them and we drained the water out, resting both of them on the plinths. And we then use SPMTs. We strategically place them under the dredge and the plant and lift them up and move them down our 23 kilometer purpose built road. The move would take place in two stages. First, the team would relocate the dredge, a vessel equipped to excavate sand from the pond floor. As the smaller of the two pieces of equipment that needed to be moved, the relocation of the dredge would be a useful test for the strength of the road and the performance of the SPMTs. Once this test was passed, the main body of the plant could then be moved. At first light, on 14 September 2020, two trains of SPMTs were driven underneath the dredge. Using hydraulics, the SPMTs lifted the dredge from its resting place on the concrete plinths and drove it slowly up a ramp out of the dock. The job was tough, and the move was risky and dangerous. No one was taking any chances. Maintaining high safety standards was paramount. We put a lot of effort in, and the safety team, as you'll see, they're always around us. Uh, they do their, their checks every morning. We do uh, DSTI every morning, which is a, a, a going through the process of what's going to happen for the day, so that the whole team is well informed. Uh, all our flagmen walking on the side are doing a great job, and then, like I said, the community liaison. Um, and all together, you know, the, the community is a big part of it. The relocation of the dredge took three days, reaching its destination on the 16th of September 2020. The SPMTs drove between the concrete plinths and gently lowered the dredge into position. The first part of the move was completed safely and ahead of schedule. Spirits were high. So we were running at an average speed of about uh, 1.8 kilometers an hour. Um, overall, we anticipated to do about one kilometer an hour. We managed to do 12 kilometers, which is really good going. Um, the road held up beautifully. Uh, all in all, it was a really good day. The move of the dredge was a success. But now, for the 7,000 ton plant. Would the road hold against this new colossal load? The relocation of the main plant began on 21st September 2020. I don't know of any other mining company that has done a move of, of this magnitude in terms of tons and distance. I gotta say, at this point in the project, I'm sleeping much better than I did over this past few months. It's been a long uh, process of design uh, through to execution. You know, we were innovative. You know, people didn't think that this was the, uh, an easy thing to do. We systematically worked through those risks. We developed the plan. We got more and more confident in the plan. And now here we are today delivering the plan. The plant took five days to move, traveling at an average speed of one kilometer per hour. 
We've been on track uh, in terms of uh, daily progress, but we did have a few challenges en route. With our SPMTs, we had a few technical issues, uh, electronic issues, which we've managed to overcome and resolve. Uh, so as you see, we stand here, we are uh, six kilometers to our destination, which we will achieve tomorrow. Big excitement. Uh, obviously, everybody feeling proud of the move. I think you've been seeing crowds coming to the road, people leaving their plants to come and see what's happening. Uh, it's, a, it's a unique moment, so everybody's feeling proud. Toward the end of the journey, thousands of people lined the road to watch this once-in-a-lifetime spectacle. Kenme also invited various government and provincial officials to witness this historic moment for Mozambique, including the Secretary of State of Nampula Province, Meti Gondola, and the Governor of Nampula Province, Manuel Rodriguez. You can describe what you're doing and you can show photos of what you're doing, but unless you see it in person, you don't actually realize the scale of what we've done. And um, I think he is proud that something like this is happening in Mozambique, and he's pleased that we're managing to bring it in more or less on schedule. Finally, on the 25th of September 2020, the plant arrived at its final destination in Pilivili. As the sun set, the long journey was over and the plant was carefully positioned on its concrete plinths, marking the completion of its journey by road. The mood was electric. The individual people involved in this project have pretty well been all been involved from the start. Many of them have spent months and months and months on site, um, which wasn't part of the original plan. And there's a real feeling of teamwork and uh, dedication some of us have been up here for seven months without having gone home. So um, those have been one of the challenges, but it's been, it has been fun. The most rewarding is seeing the plant, as you can see behind us, making its way to the final destination. The plant was on the plinth late on Friday afternoon, and I knew I'd sleep well that night for the first time in weeks. I called our chairman and sent our message to our team in Dublin to share the good news. And then I went and poured myself a decent glass of whiskey. It's a fundamental change in our business. Delighted with the outcome today. We're certainly uh, running on track on where we wanted to be. To the team, it's really hands on deck. You can't tell, but we're all smiling like Blazers believe he's master. <laughs> After a night of celebration, the next morning, the team got back to work. Although the biggest technical challenge of the move was behind them, the next stage would take careful execution. It required the plant and dredge to be floated across the Mualadi River to reach the first mining area. First, the team flooded the area containing the plant and dredge, known as the float-off pond. The water had to reach 1.5 meters to lift the plant and dredge off their plinths. Once the plant was floating, the team equalized the water levels between the float-off pond and the river channel. Bulldozers were then used to remove the berm separating the two water bodies to allow the plant and dredge to be floated across. Early in the morning of 19th October 2020, the dredge was floated out of the float-off pond and across the river channel. It took under an hour to make the crossing, with bulldozers pulling it across the river channel. The plant began to follow in its path a few hours later, slowly making its way to the first mining area. By late afternoon, both pieces of equipment had reached their destination, known as the starter pond. Bulldozers resealed the berm to separate the river channel from the starter pond and the race was now on for how soon Kenme could begin production at Pilivili. Although the project would not be formally completed until the power line and pipeline had been commissioned, the relocation of wet concentrator plant B was largely complete. Electric generators were needed to provide temporary power until operations could be connected to the grid trucks were used to transport the heavy mineral concentrate to the mineral separation plant along the 23-kilometer road until the pipeline was up and running. Although the team had lost a month in the project timeline, 
The road move had been completed faster than planned. Efficiency, careful planning and hard work had meant that despite the many challenges, they were actually ahead of their target. The team is now mining with great success, delivering volume growths, reducing costs and safeguarding shareholder returns. 100 years production, 10% of world demand.